All right, so yeah, so I wanted to spend a few minutes just talking about how we approach web application performance in OneDrive and SharePoint web applications. Um, so we'll specifically touch on you know the two topics. So how do we approach web app perf across the web apps? What are some of the primary metrics that we use to track whether we're improving performance or not? And talk a little bit about our goals. And finally, we'll conclude with Project Nucleus. So I'll do a few live demos, and then I'll have an, an exciting announcement to share at the end as well. So like, what is performance? So before we dive into the presentation, I want to make sure that you understand what we define by, by performance. So when we talk about making our web applications fast, what do we mean? So the truth is that performance is, is relative, obviously. So for example, you can consider two different scenarios. So there's two web applications, and then they finish loading at the exact same time. One application might seem to load faster if it loads content progressively, rather than waiting until the end to display anything, right? Or another scenario could be a web app might be faster for one user that's on a fast network, you know, on a powerful device, and can be slow for another user that's on a slow network with a low-end device. Um, and the web app might appear to load quickly, but then respond slowly or not at all to use interaction. So these are kind of simple scenarios to keep in mind uh, when I can continue talking about uh, performance and the work that we're doing uh, in Wonder and SharePoint. Uh, and we always, we always uh, talk in terms of objective criteria when we talk about performance that can be essentially quantitatively measured. And importantly, it can be quantitatively measured and consistent and be, be consistent across various uh, SharePoint SharePoint web apps. So with that in mind, so let's take a look at some of the key user moments in loading and interacting with a web application that we're focusing on currently. Fundamentally, our aspiration is to obviously load the page and render the most relevant content to you as the user as fast as possible and uh, to ensure that you as the user can interact with that content uh, and that interaction is very smooth and efficient. And so we can think of a page load process comprising of four different stages. Um, so the first stage is you know, really corresponds to whether you know, the user perceived to be page to actually load. The next page corresponds to whether the displayed page uh, content is actually useful to the user, followed by is it actually usable? So essentially, can the user interact with it? And finally, are those you know, page interactions seamless and smooth? And we primarily rely on two metrics. So there's there's a host of other supplementary metrics that we also track and measure, but we're currently focusing on two 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 metrics. Uh, the first one is called first meaningful paint, and it's just a measure of how fast we can paint the most relevant content on the screen. And the second one is a measure of page interactivity, which we call uh, call as first first CPU idle or FCI for short. Uh, you can lar largely think of it as being an analogous to another metric that you might be familiar with. It's called uh, time to interactive. But again, it just measures how uh, can um, our web pages become interactive and respond to user input. And so just fundamentally, the two goals that we have is really just to reduce the time to first meaningful paint, essentially show, show, show the content on the screen as fast as possible and essentially minimize the difference between the first meaningful paint and then first CPU idle. And what that really means is that we want to make sure that once the content is displayed on the screen, it's interactive as soon as the user essentially can see it. And we have multiple approaches to measuring web performance. Um, so we rely on web measurements and uh, real user measurements. So lab measurements allows to have a consistent and uh, reproducible method for evaluating web perf across you know, various builds uh, and we usually rely on, rely on lab measurements as the first line of defense for, you know, for any possible regressions. But ultimately, we rely on real user measurements as the source of truth of how our web apps perform in the wild um, and ensure that all the users across the globe are reaping the benefits of the work that we're putting into making the web apps faster. And specifically, we're focusing on two different percentiles uh, when it comes to improving web app performance. Uh, so we are primarily optimizing for the 75th percentile of our users uh, because it allows us to understand how the majority of our users uh, experience the web applications on most common types of networks. But we're also focusing on the 95th percentile as well because it allows us to understand how users on slower networks or lower end devices experience the web apps. And for us, it's very important that we focus on both. Uh, so now let's take a look at you know, the primary metrics that I just just described. So 
We use, again, uh, first meaningful paint as the measure of page content load times. Um, and in OneDrive and SharePoint web apps, we're optimized for rendering of primary content first, uh, such as you know the frequent site sections on SharePoint Home or whatever is visible currently in the viewport on you know on SharePoint SharePoint pages. Um, and the measure, the recording and measurement approaches are slightly different between static pages with kind of like static or immutable layouts, such as you know SharePoint Home, and for pages that have you know dynamic layout, right, and the highly customizable, such as such as SharePoint pages. Um, so again, we rely on the same metric, but we record it slightly differently. So the first CPU uh, idle metric, again, that's a metric that we rely on to measure interactivity of of our web pages. Um, and in essence, um, uh, first CPU idle is measured when the uh, the main thread of the browser becomes uh, becomes idle. So essentially, there's no there's no tasks, there's no long tasks that the browser is browser is busy with. So that means that the browser thread is now um, uh, is now available to uh, reliably respond to to user input. Uh, so it, this metric is very deterministic um, and allows us to to really understand when the user can actually use, use, use our web applications. Two primary metrics that, that, we, that we focus on, but again, we have a host of other supplementary metrics that we're also tracking, but our focus is on these two for now. So now let's take a look at the performance goals that we have for our web applications. So in a nutshell, we are targeting to paint uh, relevant content on the screen across our web apps uh, um, in uh, two seconds or less at 75th percentile uh, and at uh, four seconds or less at 95th percentile across our web apps. The only exception is uh, just, just because the, the, the content is so dynamic um, and is largely influenced by you know, whatever web parts you put on the page. So that's why our goals are a little bit more conservative for, for SharePoint pages. And when it comes to interactivity, we're shooting for three seconds at P, uh, P75 and six seconds at uh, P95. So these are some of our co-current internal goals. And again, we, we're, we're in constant pursuit of making our web apps faster. And once we achieve these goals, we'll, I'm sure, set more, more aggressive targets. And one last thing that I wanted to mention is that the majority, the, well, the vast majority of the work that we're putting into making uh, our web applications faster primarily focus on modern browsers. So if you want to reap all the benefits that we're putting into, into the perf work, we highly encourage you to move to modern browsers, such as the Microsoft Edge or the Chromium-based based browsers, because IE 11 and Microsoft Edge, Edge Legacy are being, being retired in the middle of next year. So that's just kind of some, something to keep in mind. All right, so let's talk about Project Nucleus. So if you haven't heard, so Project Nucleus is a, an exciting new technology that will power the next generation of OneDrive and SharePoint web applications. So we're starting um, our journey with uh, integrating uh, Project Nucleus with uh, Microsoft List, and I'll show you how it, how it kind of all works. Um, but in a nutshell, Project Nucleus helps deliver fast and uh, smooth experiences um, when interacting with the web app. And also, it makes the web application data available uh, to you regardless of the network state. So you can be on bad connection, fast connection. Uh, the data is always available to you, even, and even if you're offline, of course. Um, and Project Nucleus accomplishes this by establishing a very durable cache of the web app data on your local device. And that web app data is not just limited to files, right? Like in the case of OneDrive, OneDrive Sync client. So we're moving way beyond files here. Um, and then we're syncing the data with the web app uh, using a standard set set of APIs, so same set of APIs that are used, you know, to sync the web app data with the cloud backend. And as a result, you'll be able to get fast, powerful uh, browsing and editing capabilities when you're not even connected to the network. And the beauty of Project Nucleus is that we're building it on top of an extensible framework that will allow different web applications to take advantage of uh, its capabilities. Like I said, we're starting with uh, Microsoft Lists first, uh, but we uh, will follow it uh, by uh, other ODSP web applications. Before I go into the demo, I wanted to kind of cover some of the challenges that motivated us to start working on Project Nucleus. Um, so we've started on a journey of transitioning or transforming our web applications to uh, become progressive web apps. And while progressive web apps provide 
you know, great capabilities such as you know, local installation, native app-like behavior, um, and offer some um, yet you know, limited offline capabilities, um, we really needed to think beyond progressive web app in order to be able to provide fast access for very large and very complex data sets that you find in SharePoint every day. Um, also be able to provide experiences regardless of network connection quality and making sure that all of our users get reliable performance under periods of heavy use. Um, and again, um, we ultimately wanted to provide a very you know, full and comprehensive web app experiences when you know, the, our users um, are working with our web apps you know, when fully offline, such as on the train or in, or in a plane. So let me switch gears a little bit and show you a demo. Share my screen. Let's see. Let me know if you can see it. Yep, we got it. Yes. Yeah, so, so what I'm showing here is um, a nucleus-powered uh, list. So you you can kind of tell that it's you know there's something special about the list by you know an indication of a little sync icon over here. So this is a very very large list. Uh, so it has uh, hundred thousand items in it. So it's just just a sample kind of hardware inventory list that I kind of created just to demonstrate what what's what's possible. Uh, we've tried um, a nucleus with list with up to one one million items, and I'm sure we can go even higher. So, you know, the possibilities are endless as far as you know, supporting very large, very large entities and list lists in this this example. Um, and so, I just wanted to kind of quickly show what's happening what's happening behind the scenes. So, I'm just going to pop my dev tools over here, and let's say I wanted to you know sort uh, sort this list by the condition column. And so something interesting happens. So over here, you can see that we're seeing a bunch of nucleus log lines, right? And then what actually happened is that when I clicked sort button, it didn't go to the service. So it went directly to nucleus. So as you can see, it says call, call redir redirected. And then, it, it, and then it shows you the amount of time it took to, com to complete the call. Um, and if we look at the network over here, so this particular API is you know, it's the API that does all the heavy, heavy lifting uh, when it comes to retrieving data from the service. So this API was actually executed by Nucleus. And so if, you, if we take a look at it, you can see that it went to the local host rather to, to the SharePoint service. Um, and it returned the results in two milliseconds. So it's instantaneous. And again, you can continue up, you know, continue doing the exact same things that you were used to doing with the list. You can sort columns, you can group columns, you can filter by by uh, by different fields. And again, Nucleus will handle those requests. Um, and again, all of this will work even when 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 you're when you're offline. So this was just a quick quick demo, and I wanted to conclude by. Um, inviting all of you uh, to express your interest in participating in a private uh, private preview uh, of Project Nucleus. Um, so we would love uh, for you to, to be the first ones to try it out. So all you have to do is go to AKMS um, uh, slash Nucleus Preview. And I'm just asking to fill out the, some basic form, just kind of share, share, your, share your information and then share a little bit about some of the scenarios that you currently um, go through when working with Microsoft List and some, some of the pain points. So it's, it's going to take two or three minutes to complete. Um, and in a few weeks' time, so we're, we'll reach out to you with instructions on how you can opt in and uh, start um, uh, playing around with Nucleus. And we're really looking forward to your feedback. Yeah. Before I let you go, I have to get back on this. There's a few questions related on chat, as expected questions, which is, what about yeah. third party, and how are we expecting this to work with SharePoint Framework? Uh, so our aspiration is to definitely open up, uh, open uh, Project Nucleus up to third party and to SPFX, but it's currently not yet supported, but definitely in the plans. So we'll share more once once we have more concrete concrete plans in place. So but it's, it's definitely it. just to recap on that one. Not intended to be only for uh, first-party experience, um, and certainly we understand the importance of partners and customers. Now, um, well, we do have three minutes. How is the security of cached data insert? Uh, question from Dragon. Security. I mean, it's we follow the highest security practices to make sure that data is only available to you and nobody else. So it's all all, all encrypted. 
So everything is, is basically obviously the priority is that security is one of the main priorities in Microsoft yeah. always. Uh, so therefore, uh, we'll take care of that. Uh, and there was a few questions related on the, during your presentation that partly a joke. I think it was Ahmed who said it, and then no, 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 I was joking. And uh, basically saying no, no, this is only for Microsoft browsers. But no, 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 this is industry standards. Uh, any browser or other limitations on that. What are the browsers which will be supported by Nucleus? Or is it all of the browsers and modern browsers? And, oh, yes. and just so, a recap on that. Yeah, so for now, all, all modern browsers will, will be supported. So, you know, yeah. it'll work on, work on Firefox. Um, uh, but for now, so if you're in joining private preview, just a few, a few caveats. It's, uh, for now, it's Windows only um, and Chromium browsers only for now. Uh, but again, this is, this is not the restrictions when, once once we go GA. Yep. Cool. Cool. And that's that's also obviously the new new way. Well not a new way, but that's how we do stuff in Microsoft nowadays, which is industry standards, open source, everything open, um, and we need to do that in the future as well. But I think uh, that's pretty much it for now. Uh, uh, there's technical questions from Christian, like how many, uh, how long does it take to update the information and the list data back to get visible on the client and all of that. But I think those are technical nuances uh, and all of that is adjustable. Yeah. So um, it, the intention is that it's everything is handled automatically, merging is handled mm -hmm. automatically uh, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about you as an, you don't just see what happens in the background. So what's a really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's, and it's yeah, yeah just a quick, quick question uh, to answer it. Yeah, it's a, uh, we follow a notification based based approach. So the moment there is a notification uh, that an item has changed, we'll, we'll sync it down or sync yeah. it up if it was a offline change. And so, Anna is asking the last question, really good one. Can existing list be transformed to be in a nucleus list? And the answer is, Yes, it can. Yes. It's not, even, not about the list. It's, an, it's not about when the list has been created. It's all about us taking care of the technology behind the scenes. So every single list, the whole web application, potentially modern pages, portals, everything will be um, handled by the Nucleus in the, in the future. But again, one step at a time, still in preview. We need to review stuff first and then ensure that it's 100% fully working across the board. And then we can release that uh, in the GA. Thank you.